Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Andrea here with Dental L Tutoring. So you want to see how a mock exam practice class really is. So here is a sneak peek. We are actually working on this mock exam tonight. So our live class is tonight. Anybody who can't attend live or let's say you are clicking the link for this mock exam practice inside the course, but it's a month later, you still have full access to it for up to two years, if not more. So every student who signs up for the VIP Prep Academy gets full access to all of this for up to two years and, de and depending on when they take their exam. So you always get access to it. This is a 90 slide PowerPoint. Usually in one hour, we can't get through a full 90 slide PowerPoint, but I like students to do their homework afterwards. So I go through as many questions as I can in that one hour time. I go through these PowerPoint slides where there's a mock exam or sorry, a multiple choice question and then answers, of course, and I explain them. Anything that we don't get to go through, students have homework. So their homework is to go through it at the end, um, either the end of the day, over the weekend. It's completely up to them. We have another mock exam class the week afterwards. So they have time to kind of prepare um, every week, depending on when when the live classes are they're typically for three months out of the year there's a mock exam practice hour on either the wednesday or thursday and then there's a lecture class on either the wednesday or the thursday but let's just jump right into it here's a sneak peek i'm just going to go through the questions as if you're a student with me inside the class so there is a chat box that opens up and i do ask students if they're comfortable with it to um, send me a private message in the chat box with their answer so um anyway we will go through it. So what is informed consent? So this is actually a mock exam practice. I should have said that first. This is on pharmacology and on uh, professionalism and ethics. So we did our pharmacology and our ethics classes the week before where I did lecture classes on those. So now I give a mock exam practice class to test their knowledge. So you'll see a mix in here with um, ethics, professionalism and pharmacology. So what is informed consent? So is it A, competent patients can accept or refuse treatment, B, the patient can refuse radiographs, C, the patient must have adequate information to make a decision, or A and C. So while the student is answering this, or if anybody has questions, I typically go on to say, you know, do you guys remember what informed consent means? Does it mean they're signing something? Does it mean they're not signing something? You know, it kind of gives them a chance to think about it. And then I give them a minute to let me know what their answer is and then I go over it. So A and C is the correct answer. So I'm just going to read the correct answer for you guys here. So competent patients can accept or refuse treatment and then C, the patient must have adequate information to make the decision. So then I like to explain this. So we don't just move on. I like to explain it in a rationale too. So that's why it's nice to attend the live classes, but even if you can't, that's okay because I explain everything as if you're there and then you can watch the recording afterwards. So basically, every patient has the right to accept or refuse the treatment. Informed consent is just we are asking their consent. We are giving them the chance to say, oh, I didn't know I was in for a root canal treatment today. I thought I was just doing the cleaning. I don't want the root canal today. I just want the cleaning or, you know, something like that. But then also C is correct as well. So the patient must have adequate information to make the decision. So let's just say we're talking about x-rays. If they have an abscess um, and then the patient doesn't want x-rays, well, we still have to go along and say, without an x-ray, we cannot determine 110% if that's an abscess or not. We can only assume. And without the x-ray, we don't even know what type of abscess it is, but you have the right to say no if you don't want it. But you could also say, but the dentist won't give you antibiotics without the x-ray because we need to know it's an abscess. But again, you have the right as that patient to say no. So see how we're giving them all the information. We're not refusing their choice, but you have to give them the information so they can make the right choice. Because that patient might have said, oh, I didn't realize you needed the x-ray to see the abscess. Oh, okay. It's kind of like looking at it another way. If the patient has a large hole in their tooth and you're telling the patient you're taking an x-ray to check if that's a cavity, well, it's obviously a cavity. So that's when the patient might say to you, uh, why do you need the x-ray to check for a cavity? It's clearly a cavity. Even I can tell it's a cavity. But if you give them more information and say, 
what we're really checking for is what type of cavity it is. How deep is it? You might need a root canal. The x-ray will tell us how deep that cavity went. You don't need the x-ray, but just so you know, when I go in there to fix the cavity, when I go in there to remove the cavity, if it's too deep, we have to stop and give you the root canal. Um, I would rather know ahead of time to give you the choice ahead of time, not have to stop in the middle of a procedure. Let's say we have to do all of that for no reason and you don't even want the root canal anyway. So I'm kind of going above and beyond here, but do you guys get what I'm saying? We always have to explain things to the patient because they don't know what they don't know. Anyways, what is veracity? Is it fairness? Oh, sorry guys, I forgot to add A, B, and C. I was currently, whoops, that's not A, B, or C. I was currently um, updating this mock exam and adding pictures. So sorry if there's some formatting errors. I was just so excited to show everybody this. Okay, so what is veracity? Is it fairness? Is it the patient's right to choose, telling the truth, or accepting all individuals? So remember, when we're talking about ethics, you need to know those different categories. I give the student a moment or two to think about it. And then I talk about it. So veracity is telling the truth. That's the only and the best definition, telling the truth. Let's go through one more of the ethics and then we'll do some pharmacology ones. What is non-maleficence? Is it community service, do no harm, benefiting the patient or being um, just? What is non-maleficence? I give the patient a moment to answer, <laughs> the student a moment to answer, and then I go for it. Do, do no harm. So this is basically the only definition for non-maleficence is do no harm. And then I would typically take the time to explain and go into our ethics notes and go through these categories again if a student wasn't sure. So let me just skip down here. Let's just do some pharmacology questions. Oh, look at that. I just landed on one. So what is the term that is related to the duration of an effect of a drug? So what does it mean when we're talking about duration of an effect of a drug? Is it efficacy? Is it potency? Is it half-life or is it onset? Pharmacology is very tough for a lot of people. So I would typically give them a moment to answer this, but then I know that I will likely be taking the time to explain all of these definitions again to them so the students can make notes so they know it for the board exam. So the correct answer is half-life. What equals half the amount of time for a drug to fall to half the original blood level? That is the answer, and I, and, and I did give a little bit of an explanation here. Let's go through one more. What route of administration is considered the safest, least expensive, and most convenient? This is kind of an easy one. I'm sure everybody's going to get this one here. So it is oral. And then I'll take the time to go over the other ones if anybody had any questions. The nice thing about students being able to answer either A, B, C, or D in the chat box where no, no other student can see it, I'm the one who can. But if let's say every student gets the question wrong, then I know to stop and explain it. If everybody gets the question right, then I move on to the next one. So the live classes really are a lot of fun, but there's no pressure in attending live if you can't. The session recordings are usually uploaded by that evening. So very, very quick for you. So I hope you enjoyed this mock exam practice. This was a very short one just to give you a sneak peek inside what a mock exam practice class is typically like. I will leave a link for you guys down below. Have a look where if you are interested, I do have a absolutely free seven day um, board exam prep trial for either dental hygiene students or dental assisting students. So you can click on that link and you can actually see other live classes that I have recorded for you. There are PowerPoints, mock exams, all kind of stuffs, <laughs> all kind of stuffs, all kind of things, all kinds of things. Oh my goodness, you guys, I can't talk today. All kinds of things for you. If you're curious about the VIP Board Exam Prep Academy, but you're on the fence of if you want to sign up yet and feel free, of course, to ask me any questions. There is now a new live chat feature right on my website. That is the easiest way to get in touch with me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to everybody very, very soon.